Good evening. It is so exciting to see you all here and to think about what it is you're going to be doing over the course of the next 24 hours. It is absolutely thrilling to see an issue that is so much at the center of my heart and I can tell it's at the center of yours and that's creating pathways to opportunity for every single person in this nation. As you think about that work, though, I think it's so important to understand just what you've been hearing from the speakers before me, is that while making sure that every child gets to reach his or her full potential is certainly the moral thing to do. It is at the core of our moral spirit, but it is also an economic imperative, it is a national imperative, it is a democratic imperative, and it is not often that we have things coming together in that perfect way so that there are no longer any excuses. As we think about the challenge of making sure that all can reach their full potential, we really do have to ask ourselves, who do we mean when we say all? Is it enough to just say all? I have found that it is not. We have to know who we're talking about because as we begin to identify the groups and the individuals who need attention the most, we begin to nuance our strategies. And it's only by nuancing your strategies that you can really pinpoint your input to have the result that you want. As we think about this nation, the story of the first half of the 21st century is definitely a story of our shifting demographics. We are rapidly rapidly becoming a nation in which the majority of people in the United States of America will be people of color, Latino, Native American, Asian, African American. We are becoming a nation that is really going to challenge us at our core when we think of being a land of opportunity. What we have known is that by 2043, the majority of the people in this country will be of color, but what we're not so cognizant of is how close in that is. Since 2012, the majority of all babies born in this country have been of color. In four years, the majority of all young people, 18 and under, all children, will be children of color. That when we think about this notion of 2043, we have to think about what's happening along the way. By 2030, the majority of the young workforce will be of color. So as we think about ourselves as a nation, we have to begin to understand that the very people who have been so left behind have become the nation. And if they don't succeed, the nation does not succeed. When we look at this population that is 16 to 24, not in school and not in the labor force, we have every reason to worry about them. But we also have every reason to worry about our nation. Who are these young people? Of those who are white in that age group, 11% are not in school or not in the labor force. Of those who are African American within that age group, 22% are not in school or not working. Of those who are Latino, 18%. Of those who are Native American, 27%. Of those who are Asian, 8%. As we think about the challenge and we disaggregate the numbers, it focuses us like a laser on the issues that we have to address. Let me tell you why. If we're going to solve this problem, we have to do a couple of things. One is we have to grow good jobs. As you just heard, all of the training programs, all of the preparation in the world will not solve the problem of people being unemployed if we don't have jobs. But if they're not good jobs, good jobs that lead to careers, good jobs that pay enough for people to be able to live with dignity, we haven't solved the problem. So this notion of growing good jobs becomes absolutely essential. And as we think about who's in the jobs that often are paying the lowest wages, we look at people who are doing service work, we look at restaurant workers, we look at the people who are home care workers. It is very clear that we have to be very strategic about making sure that we're lifting the floor on jobs. We know that we have to build capability if we're going to really be ready for the future. In building capability, we have to think about where do we need to build it. We live in a nation in which where you live is a proxy for opportunity. You tell me your address, and I can tell you your life expectancy. 
I can also tell you the likelihood that you or your children had access to a good school in your neighborhood. I can tell you the likelihood that you have asthma, diabetes, heart disease because of the circumstances in your neighborhood. If you are lucky enough to own a home, I can tell you whether or not you can pull any value out of that home for an emergency, to be able to start a business, to be able to withstand a crisis. Where you live is a proxy for opportunity, and it's particularly a proxy of opportunity if you're black or Latino and happen to live in a community of concentrated poverty. And so part of our strategy for building capability has to take into account the kinds of communities that people live in and how to make sure that all the schools are good schools, including in low-income communities of color. How to make sure that all children <laughs> All children have access to what they need to be healthy, access to fresh fruits and vegetables. How do we make sure that we get grocery stores and farmers markets and communities that don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables? How to make sure that young people can connect with natural job networks? And you know that's how you get a job. If I ask you all to raise your hand if the first job you ever had was because somebody in your family or a family friend or someone in the neighborhood said, I know where there's an opportunity, that's a natural job network. If people don't have them, we have to create them. In order to know what you need to do, to do, you need to know the circumstances of the people who you want to help. We have to build capabilities, put the institutions there, but make sure people have access to them, to good schools, to higher education, to job training, to all of those things. But we also have to remove barriers. We have to remove barriers, and there are many barriers that still exist in this country. We all shall be eternally grateful to Michelle Alexander for writing the book, The New Jim Crow, and bringing, and bringing the issue and the scandal of incarceration into all of our uh, homes and workplaces and discussion groups. And we've been talking about it, and we recognize that it is a scandal, and we can do something about it. We can reverse the trend. We can keep, get people out, and we can offer opportunities when people return from being incarcerated. We can stop the pipeline in. We can help people to see a path that doesn't include juvenile hall or incarceration. And we have to make sure that when people have served their time, and they come back into community, there's a job for them. And we need to make sure that they're welcome, and we need to ban that box. Why should a young person have to check a box saying, don't even look at me, before we've taken a look and we've seen the qualifications and we see that they might be able to really make a contribution? We're at a critical moment. It's a critical moment, and we have to acknowledge it, that the moral agenda and the economic agenda have come together. If we don't get it right this time, we will suffer for a long time. If people of color don't become the middle class, there'll be no middle class. If we don't help these young people who you're here to talk about succeed because of this effort, because we don't have 50 more times to do it, let's do it right this time. Congratulations and thank you.